Oh my gosh. Look at the headline that we see in the BBC. The London Telegraph has a similar headline. Extremists are going to be forced to go to anti-extremist classes. And then you read the article, it's or articles, the government talking point. It's like, it's so mean, it's so horrible. They're jihad fighters for ISIS and Al-Qaeda that left the UK in the last five years to battle the evil dictator Assad, and now they're coming back to England, and of course they're not going to be locked up for their terrorist activities because they're a proxy army of the West. But then how do you hide that? You put it out as a civil rights article. Can you believe what they're going to make ISIS and Al-Qaeda fighters do after returning from blowing up churches, chopping men, women, and children's heads off, forcing Shiite Muslims to suicide bomb for them, or they'll kill their whole families, beheading priests, raping nuns, selling five- and six-year-old girls by the thousands into sex slavery? They're going to make Jeffrey Dahmer, who was found with a bunch of dead bodies in his refrigerator, go to a, a class. <laughs> that is one article of literally over 100 insane asylum stories just to show how crazy all this is. I have a very special video that I came up here and I shot yesterday afternoon. And it went out late last night. And I'm going to be shooting these videos every couple days. We're putting together investigative reports, um, special reports, uh, many documentaries. I am going whole hog on exposing how they're rigging the whole system against the American people, the American voter, and Donald Trump, and, and, and really reaching out to the Bernie Sanders voters. Every one of them I talk to is voting for Hillary. I can't find real Hillary supporters anywhere in the country, even, even in Democrat cities, and no one else really can, except for very rich elite areas. And so I'm going to be illustrating this the next three months after this election. And I'm going to be pointing out as well that just as Trump made it a big deal that the Republicans were stealing states from him that he won and just giving the delegates to Ted Cruz, you'd hear, Trump won Louisiana, and then a week later, but the delegates have been given to Ted Cruz. Or, we're not going to let you vote in Colorado because the polls show Trump's going to have a landslide. We're just canceling the election, and the party says it's Ted Cruz. Well, Trump didn't go along with that. And the media said, oh, you miscalculated, sore loser. And he said, I'm not a loser. You're stealing it. You're stealing the voters' votes. The Republican establishment had to back off. The Democrats didn't. The Democrats didn't. You got a lot of their mental patient mainline Republicans who aren't real conservatives but are cuckled conservatives uh, who just love being part of this old snot-nosed blue blood Rockefeller Republican uh, country club group who are the snot-nosed racist uh, just liberal version of a Republican, the never Trump people still run around messianically with their cowboy hats. And I talked to a bunch of them. I said, you got any cattle? You know how to use a lariat? You ever dehorned with an electric dehorner? You ever uh, process 2,000 head of cattle in one day? Because I have, and I don't consider myself to be a cowboy. A real, they're still cowboys, by the way. They work about 12, 14 hours a day, and they are amazing. And they have a dangerous job. And I don't know what it is about wearing a cowboy hat. It's, you know, oh, we're for Hillary, not a Trump. We're a cowboy hat, so, so it's all right. If I see one more cowboy hat in association with it, I'm going to throw up. But I digress. Uh, we've proven we've got our finger on the pulse of the globalist. We know how to defeat them. And I'm, I'm lobbying directly to Trump here on air. People say, why don't you just tell him? Well, I have. But the point is, to, to, to some of his crew, who are smart folks, they're just trying to decide how to go at this. And he's trying to decide, basically, does he launch it now or launch it later? I think the whole theme is crooked Hillary. From the emails to Google not even listing Trump in, in an election searches to fake polls. Like, I didn't see it in my stack. You guys pull me the articles on Infowars.com uh, with... Um, Reuters now admits they skewed a poll because Trump was ahead to cheat him and take him out of the lead. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you going to stand for free and open elections? Are you going to stand against corruption? Or are you going to allow the next level of tyranny and crookedness and a rigged system to openly uh, be practiced in this country? 
I shot a special report yesterday that's really an announcement. It's titled, An Emergency Message to Donald Trump. It's red-linked on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com right now. We tweeted it out at Real Alex Jones. Please retweet it. It's also posted on our Facebook channels. And in it, I lay out the fact that Infowars, starting yesterday, is going to be producing many documentaries, um, political factoid uh, news reports, investigative journal reports, chronicling the entire giant spectrum of rigging that is going on from Google admitting they don't list Donald Trump as, quote, a presidential candidate on their page. Twitter admitting they've been blocking Donald Trump uh, tweets being shared. Uh, Facebook engaged in massive censorship across the board. There's even congressional investigations. It is truly unprecedented. So whether you love Donald Trump or hate him, you have to understand, they tried in more than 14 states to give the votes that Donald Trump got winning Louisiana, Colorado, and countless other states to Ted Cruz. And Donald Trump didn't play along with it. He didn't go along with it like Bernie Sanders. And that's when suddenly you started seeing Cruz sink in the polls despite the mainstream media trying to prop him up. Now, the Democrats uh, are in Politico. They're in the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. And I happen to know from some high-level political consultants that have been meeting with the Democrats and who are our Quislings that... They believe that they're going to be able to get enough never-Trump people to vote in Texas to be able to throw the state Democrat, and if, if, if Trump loses Texas, he will lose the election. For the, have the second most delegates. And I've been around these Cruz people. They are mentally ill. They are a cult. You've got Glenn Beck on ABC News with Democratic operatives saying, don't vote for Trump, vote for somebody else. Well, that's a vote for Hillary. You look at the Electoral College the, the, to see my beloved Texas hijacked by that Canadian Cuban carpetbagger. Scallywag of the highest order. And to see, I mean, he fits the definition in spades. If Texas does this, I, I'm, I'm going to be completely ashamed. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I don't think Texas will because we keep our word around here. And Ted Cruz broke his. But I, I am, I am, and, and, and by the way, I used to admire Ted Cruz. He's very well spoken, very smart. I said, yeah, his wife's Goldman Sachs. Yeah, he came up with the Bushes, but maybe he's turning against them. But boy, I tell you, he he absolutely did a 180. And it is so sad. And you've got a bunch of spiteful so-called Texans, big hats, no cattle, wearing their Texas shirts, who think that they're going to do this. In fact, they don't even need to get enough of them to go vote for Cruz as a throwaway vote to throw it to Hillary. That is need to create that perception so people believe Texas goes for Hillary. They just have to have plausible deniability. And I hope if that happens, they're very, very, very proud of themselves, and they frame their little Texas shirts they wear and their little their little cowboy hats and their little boots that never stepped in manure before. So this is a war against reality. The whole Black Lives Matter thing, the whole Hillary, vote for me because I'm a woman, you bet I'm playing the woman card. All of this is a total fraud. Obama helped double black unemployment. And people say, why did he give less support to black neighborhoods than the other group? Because he's already got you under his thumb. He wants you like a pimp, wants you absolutely down and out under his control. This is a process. And the evil old Republican establishment is nakedly allied with the Democratic establishment and all the big foreign leaders and the Pope and the communist Chinese and the Saudi Arabians that throw gay people off rooftops and chop their heads off, for heaven's sakes, and, and the Mexican president, all of them, the whole world.
against Trump, but I tell you, from Mexico and Chile and from Australia and, and Africa and all over, I see people uh, on YouTube and on InfoWars saying, I'm, I'd support Trump. I see right through it. He's a nationalist. He's a sovereign person that wants you to be wealthy. Absolutely. It's so clear. That's why they're scared of him. So the people across the board are waking up and seeing what's happening. Populism is rising across the planet. I'm going to come back and play this this special message to Donald Trump and to the American people where I lay out just some of the evidence of this. But when you see the things they're doing and, 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 and everything's being engaged in and the lies and the misrepresentations, just like I see ads online and I, and I see it on broadcast, people saying, I'm voting against Donald Trump because he's anti-gay. Hillary Clinton, I mean, it's actually something conservatives should be mad at Trump for if you want to go the cruise route. But he, he didn't go that direction, criticizing Trump. Trump was in the advocate for equal rights and people being able to get married 30 years ago. Trump's never made that his issue and in his own n nomination speech made that clear. They don't care. They, they are all, I see it everywhere saying Donald Trump wants to bring back black segregation. we got a new video of that we're going to play. Uh, they, they, they've got people saying he wants to go after gay people. It's just total BS. He wants to ship blacks back to Africa. All he said was, if we're not vetting anybody coming in from Syria, and we don't even check their IDs, we've got to stop all of it till we start the vetting process again. That's like if gas is leaking in your house, you turn the gas off until it's fixed. Or if you're Pipe burst. You'll turn the water off. First, he said, they're murdering Christians. We got to bring them in. They went, excuse me, sir. They don't let Christians in. It's 20% Christian in Syria, but it's 0.3% Obama lets in. These are ISIS. And he went, excuse me? And did a 180. Not in a flip-flop, but when he got more info. So, again, it is an inverted reality. Donald Trump wants to cut taxes. Donald Trump knows we have one-sided deals with China and India and over 160 other third world countries. We're falling apart. The Wall Street Journal admits that this is the worst recovery in our history and that our economy is falling apart. And that's with cooked numbers. The Wall Street Journal looks at the fake numbers that every major economist admit are fake. The unemployment numbers, the inflation numbers, uh, the welfare numbers. Seven years later, recovery remains the weakest of the post-World War II era. We've been in a long-term depression for most people, a recession for others, and tiny groups of elites have never made bigger profits. The big banks never made bigger profits. The insurance companies never made bigger profits. And you notice who the big banks, Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, and the big insurance companies are financing. They're not giving $1 to Donald Trump. Big Pharma, zero to Donald Trump. The defense contractors, nothing to Trump because he was against the Iraq war and he's not for attacking people that aren't attacking us. That's why they call him a warmonger to the left. And you have these pseudo intellectual leftists brought up without families, desperate, scared. All they've got is their trendiness. They felt like nerds. The system packaged being a nerd is the new cool. And now they've given up any intellectualism just to feel official and powerful and cool when the whole power structure is against Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is now says he's taking the gloves off. Well, that's good. Because when we come back, we're going to talk about the number one way to stop the New World Order, and we can do it. It's called a landslide. And the polls show Trump's really set for a landslide. That's why Reuters has been caught faking polls to try to reverse that. Every globalist, every New World Order operator is activating right now and showing their true colors. The Washington Post, the Financial Times of London, The Economist magazine, and scores of others in the last week have all come out and said the New World Order, they use that term, is in trouble. World government is in trouble. Liberal global governance is in trouble. That's a new term. They're calling it liberal. And they say, we're going to open the borders up, and we're going to give the third world all these free goodies. And so that's who we're going to represent. That's how we're going to end the republics, the limited democracies, is we're going to bring in outside groups to outvote you. And the Trump um, campaign is resisting that. It's the end of sovereignty. It's the end of nation states. It's the end of being able to run somewhere.
It's a global government. And they go on in The Economist, in an article titled The New Political Divide, to say, all of our hopes are in Hillary Clinton. We must get her in office or world government is in trouble. Go read the article. It's on screen for TV viewers. We're simulcasting at Infowars.com forward slash show as we always do. But here's the AP, just, just to set the table of what we're fighting. Pope too young on Poland trip. Believe in a new humanity. Ah, transhumanism. Krakow, Poland, AP. Pope Francis encouraged hundreds of thousands of young people at a global gathering Sunday to believe in a new humanity, close quote, that is stronger than evil and refuses to see borders or barriers. Ah. And, of course, he wants wealth redistribution, but not from the Vatican Trust, the richest institution on the planet. He doesn't want to bring refugees into where he is. He washes the feet of Muslims, but he doesn't wash the feet of people blown up by suicide bombers or their families. But notice he says, refuse to see, refuse to see. That's delusion. God wants us to have knowledge and understanding. The devil dumbs it all down where it's just feelings and, and buying into, oh, oh, I refuse to see. He wants you to refuse to see and just, oh, walk off the cliff like Felsa Doom and Conan the Barbarian. He says, steel isn't strong, boy. Flesh is stronger. See that little girl up there on the, up there on the crag, up there at the cliff. Come to me. Come to me, my child. And she just jumps off and kills herself. And that's what he says. Don't see anything. Don't see who runs the global government, the IMF and World Bank, and the new global carbon tax. Don't see the plans they have. Don't see how the megabanks exempt themselves from taxes. Just don't see borders. Remember, he said he was nauseated by Christianity and how and colonialism and people complaining about how Europe was a Christian uh, area and, 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 and bring in more migrants to rape and kill and give them everything free because, because Pope Francis is an order globalist. They blackmailed the last pope to step down with sex scandals. That was even the London Guardian. And they brought in a Jesuit communist pope. World government's making its move. Now, I'm going to come back from break. Roger Stone is spending, uh, I believe, a full hour with us. Former Trump campaign head. His business partner, Mr. Manafort, is the current head of the campaign. Stone likes to play down his importance and his role, uh, but obviously it's uh, quite the opposite. Uh, and uh, his initiatives mesh with mine on how to defeat the globalist. I see the guy's totally truth-based. That's why they call him a big liar and the dirtiest trickster ever and the rest of it. But he concurs with my analysis. We had long meetings this weekend. Well, Friday and Saturday on the phone. And he, he agrees we, we need to make the central issue election fraud. So we're going to play this special report. And then I'm going to come back and break down how they're already doing it in different ways. It's not just stealing it the day of, it's what they do before. And if we know about it, people now accept that Hillary's so crooked and evil and corrupt, it'll blow up in her face. Let's, let's go to this report when we come back from break, because I won't have time to do it now. But, but Trump's genius is that when they try to bully him, he realizes the dinosaur media isn't dominant anymore because he is able pun intended, to trump them because of his incredible star appeal, the gravitas, the fact that they can't ignore him. Though they try. They try to distill down clips of his speeches that aren't as powerful. And then that gives the media little sniblets they can cut out, little giblets uh, to misrepresent what he's saying. But when you will sit there and watch him give a beautiful, rambling, from the heart, two-hour speech, I mean, he gives like four or five of these a week. Sometimes like 10 hour long ones. And I just, I, I hate missing them. I sit there with my children around the dinner table, which we never used to do, and, you know, have the computer over there. And I just say, this, listen to this. He does some colloquial stuff about the locals and their businesses and their lives, you know, just to humanize things. But when he gets into the era of economic surrenders over, Hillary's a communist Chinese spy, she is. I mean, I talked to retired, and I mean recently retired, top generals. And they go, no, look, I can't tell you what's going on. Go read this news article. It's got it right. And I go read the article, and it's Hillary Clinton's a communist Chinese spy. 
where I talk to top people. You hear a lot of them on the air, not you know, Cy Hirsch, you name it. But people just say, mm, go read this news article. That's accurate. And you go read the news article, and it's Matt Bracken saying they're planning a Tet 2 offensive in the fall. And this is a year ago, and now you see it happening with Islamics. They're strongly considering activating Black Lives Matter, having false flags where massive numbers of innocent blacks are killed, and trying to cause a race war. We told you that a long time ago. Obviously, you can see that, too. All of us see this. But they're really got a lot of different agendas going and are strongly considering creating such a crisis. Obama could suspend the election or we're in such turmoil when they have the election that, that, that people are distracted that Trump's had the election stolen you know, from him uh, by cities burning. The New World Order is making its move. Now, I want to play a clip first as, as we go to break from Trump earlier this week. And I happen to know for a fact that the Trump campaign, whenever it came out that the Russians had uh, supposedly hacked his emails, and from my sources, it is the Russians. And it shows Hillary, that these are the emails she wouldn't give over to the FBI earlier. But it also shows the DNC in there stealing the election from Sanders, sending protesters to Trump, which they denied, and, and, and having them dress up like Sanders supporters and saying, we don't care what happens, We're, we've got the superdelegates. It's proof of the fraud. Thank God they're doing that. They realize America is being occupied by a political, corporate, globalist coup that wants to attack Russia. So it's in Russia's interest and in our interest to have this exposed. Globalism is where you're conquered by big mega banks. So when we come back, we've got this clip first and then his report. My report, but we have clips of Trump you know, warning of election fraud that is so important. But Trump countermanded his advisors and people that had come out and denied it was Russians earlier on and came out and said, I don't know who it is. I'm not talking to the Russians. By the way, he's not. But if you got Hillary's emails, the ones she deleted and released them, she's a criminal. He just doubled down. He owned it. He's such a leader. And that's why they're scared of him. He wants to save this country, folks. That's why the whole power structure is going after Donald Trump. Shame on anyone that doesn't vote for him. So here are the headlines. After non-endorsement, will Texans stand by U.S. Senator Cruz as the establishment media tries to get the never Trump people to either not vote or, or, or vote for Hillary or write his name in so Donald Trump loses? They'll probably do it. I mean, they're very proud of themselves. Uh, Pat Cadell blasts Reuters back-rigging polls to show Clinton up. They've been caught just engaged in fraud, basically. Speaking exclusively to Breitbart News, political polling pioneer Pat Cadell said the Reuters news service was guilty of an unprecedented act of professional malpractice after it announced Friday it was dropping the neither option from their presidential campaign tracking polls and then went back to reconfiguring previously released polls to present different results with a reinterpretation of the new neither and again, that's to get rid of the closeted Trump supporters I keep talking about. That's the big secret. The big secret weapon is that we've never seen so many closeted people that are ashamed to say they're voting for Trump. But we know they're there. The numbers show it. And so that's why Hillary and others are so scared right now and why they're having Reuters go back in time over the last two weeks where... Trump surged seven to ten points ahead in, in scientific polls across the board, and it still shows that. Trump's ahead in all the other big polls, but Reuters went back in time and memory hold it and is changing it to take out the neither and tweak stuff and just give it to Hillary. Some cases are giving her like seven points they're adding on. I mean, this is putting your finger on the scale, but I... They stole the election in at least ten states from Sanders. He's the admitted winner. The Guardian reports, not even my wife knows, secret Donald Trump voters speak out. Oh, yeah. And that's why this is going on. So this is a big, big deal. Now, I'm going to play this clip because I mentioned it uh, of uh, Trump saying, hey, I don't know the Russians. But, yeah, they've got emails of Hillary doing corrupt stuff. Please release more. Absolutely. Who cares if it comes from the Easter Bunny? Don't change the subject. You deleted the emails, you wouldn't give the FBI the emails, you lied about it all, let's see what's in there. But we know what's in there. 
And the word is, I'm afraid the Russians and others, there's others, are going to be releasing all the goodies, Hillary. That's why they're getting ready to start a race war or a class war with all the communists right now. That's what cops every couple of days get shot in the back of the heads about. Again, the establishments pull out the stops, folks. Let's go ahead and play that clip. What do I have to get involved with Putin for? I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect me. He doesn't respect our president. And if it is Russia, which is probably not, nobody knows who it is. But if it is Russia, it's really bad for a different reason. Because it shows how little respect they have for our country when they would hack into a major party and get everything. But it would be interesting to see. I, I will tell you this. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. Let's see if that happens. That'll be next. Yes, sir. God in heaven, please give us Donald Trump. Uh, that's why the elite hate him. They've brought in all these crooks, all these globalists, all these special interests. They're carving the country up. They've already sold out 87% of our industry compared to what we had in the 1960s. They preside over selling our deals. Pracharya, from one of the richest families in India, the head of the UN Climate Fund at the time, six, seven years ago, did a carbon deal with England where he got the Brits to give up their final steel mills that were powered by coal plants that were clean. And here's the best part. He had them pay in a carbon indulgence to build a dirty plant his son owned in India worth over $500 million. <laughs> Donald Trump isn't going to do that. That guy is so hard-nosed with him as a negotiator for this country. I've seen these videos of architects and people bitching. I actually went into the research. Oh, I built a clubhouse for Trump. And then, and then he only gave me like 20% of what I was supposedly, no, no, no. You said it'd be one price, then it ballooned. Trump hard-nosed you, you agreed to it. That's how business works. I mean, I get distributors on the line and I say, I'm not going to carry a product anymore. It's really good, it's really low price, but I got somebody else basically as good, they'll go lower. And allow me to sell it even lower. I only want to make 20, 30% on this, so I'm the dominant person in the field, and, and, and then I can fund myself. And they go, no, we're not. And I say, okay, I'm leaving then. And you know what? They call me up a week later and say, okay, we'll do that deal. But you got to private label it. And I'm not bashing our great sponsors. They're wonderful people. Uh, you know, you can get the super high quality, best storable foods out there. Today's the day it ends. 40% off at InfoWarsStore.com. 40% off. You notice I can only offer that like once a year before. I'm just twisting arms. I mean, but that's what I do. I'm sorry the other distributors and the other sellers don't like it. Wah, wah, that I'm selling it for lower prices. I'm a capitalist. Get used to it. I'd rather sell 5 million hamburgers with a lower profit per one and make way more. It's not rocket science. I'm an American. Get used to it. Sorry nobody wants to compete. Sorry nobody wants to deal with me. Same thing with Donald Trump. So, we've got sales on all the nutraceuticals, the water filters, the air purifiers, all the great quality products that we've researched that I personally use that we give you the very best deals you're going to find anywhere. 40% off brain force, the tropic, colloidal silver, antibiotic, natural antibiotic, and so much more. X2, super male vitality. Take advantage of it. It ends today. Infowarsstore.com, infowarslife.com, or call toll free. 888-253-3139. And I want to thank all the listeners, all the viewers that have really supported us in the last four or five days that we've had this fundraiser mega sale going. Because... We have brought in the capital I need to know that I can budget continuing on in the next year with the crew I have and to get additional camera people, editors, and reporters. It's about what we wanted. We, we actually exceeded our targets a little bit. But I'm a gutsy guy. I have dumped everything in this year because everything's on the line. So now we've just budgeted where I can safely get a few more crew so we're not walking around 18 hours a day here cross-eyed. We're so exhausted. I mean, and I'm not complaining. Let me tell you, I'm animated. I was so upset Friday and Saturday that I was up here late Friday night. I was up here all, yesterday, basically, for most of the day. People say, well, aren't you with your kids? I, you know, I, I was with them in the morning. I was with them at night. I was with them today. 
I'm at a war, folks. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm up here shooting special reports, doing investigations, going back and collating all the polls, all the research numbers, what state was stolen, where they tried to steal it to give it to my investigative journalist, because I got some great writers and great folks, but quite frankly, when you see all these articles on InfoWars, it's me. I'm sending links. I'm giving them the data dump. I'm giving them the, you know, the, the, the dossier and saying, do this report. And they go out and dig up even more stuff than I found. And I'm not bragging, but let me tell you, you do not have someone more savagely committed. And, and listen, I have a great gut. I have a great sixth sense that God gave me. And I was there today with my children on the green belt swimming. And I know they need me. I'm the guy that takes care of them. And I knew that what I'm doing with Hillary and what I'm doing focusing on election fraud, because there's been deaths of DNC, the head DNC guy, uh, over outreach that said that was fraud against Sanders. He was found, he was executed. They're covering that up. DNC election fraud whistleblower found murdered. Another guy got murdered. Uh, I will never commit suicide. I don't use drugs. They'll grab you and shoot you up with heroin or whatever and kill you. Uh, you know, if they claim I have a heart attack at 42, I'm in great shape. I've been to the doctor. I have good blood pressure. Uh, I have just, everything's good. My, my sugar is borderline, borderline. It's not borderline diabetic. It's, I got my blood tested again two weeks ago. Uh, it's, 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 it's borderline, borderline. It's a little high. But I got great health, and uh, if anything happens to me, I was murdered. But listen, I'm not bitching and complaining. I'm going to check out of here someday anyways. I'm one of those guys that is committed. I'm alive. I'm so alive, I'm ready to give it all up for my family and for you. Because I don't like scum, I don't like con artists, I don't like filth. And I know they're better men than men and better women. We're going to beat them. So support us, pray for us. We'll be back. I'll play the special Donald Trump report. It's on InfoWars.com that everybody needs to spread the four wins. It's so important. My emergency message to Donald Trump, InfoWars.com. Please spread it. They're trying to condition us that Hillary can have hundreds of scandals and it's okay. Can you imagine what she'll do once she's in office? But it does show the arrogance of the establishment because I'm not putting a good face on this. That we've had reporters, as well as myself, all over the United States the last year for this election. You've seen them. On the radio, you've heard them. Where we have our reporters everywhere. And everybody talks about this online. And my mother was talking about this yesterday to me. And, and she used to be a Democrat. She's more of a libertarian. Most of her friends are hardcore liberals, and they don't like Hillary Clinton. They hate her. And they don't know who they're going to vote for. They're saying they're going to vote for somebody else. So where are they? And I'm not talking about, oh, well, you're in Texas, so that's Republican. I'm in Austin. It's about as globalist and liberal in, 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 in the central city as San Francisco. And I don't see people down there that are supporting Hillary. Only in Terrytown, which I cut through sometimes coming to work, if there's traffic jams on the highway, then I see Hillary signs all over the place. In, in an area where a four bedroom costs two to three million dollars. It's as expensive as New York City. And they're all Democrats. And they run the show. And they're the ones getting fat off all this, off the special deals. They don't have to produce. They just sell off our industry, sell off our jobs, let foreign banks come in and sell us derivatives. And, and, and the Democrats have gotten rid of all the laws banning loan sharking, where they can charge people 30, 40 percent interest in a month. It's really shameful. And, folks, you know I cut my teeth attacking the Republicans. I hate the Republican establishment. They're against Trump, too. But Roger Stone's coming up. We'll take calls in the second half of the interview with him. I want to go to this Donald Trump video, and it's the first of many. I, you know, really the only day off around here is Saturday. We have a couple of reporters that write articles and post stories on Saturday, but that's our dead time. And I called three or four of the camera folks and editors, and the fourth guy answered, and Rob Jacobson, great guy, I said, Rob, been working here 15 years. I said, will you come in and shoot a video, edit it? I really need to shoot some videos. I need to work. We came up here and we worked about seven hours yesterday. Not on just this, but other things. And I'm not bragging, but I'm saying that's how committed I am. I just can't sit here and watch Google delist 
Trump online and not even have him listed as a presidential candidate and defend it. Or Twitter block him or polls being manipulated or uh, the Republican RNC given 40 percent less airtime than the DNC was given on major networks. Or the fact that they're going to have two of the three debates now during primetime NFL football games. So that the Republican base doesn't get fired up. I mean, the fix is in. We must vote for Trump as a referendum against fraud. But Trump, I remember the media saying, he screwed up. He didn't, you know, he didn't lay down to the delegates. You know, oh, the Republicans passed a rule that delegates matter, not voters. Voters never mattered, you silly goose. Silly, silly, silly kid. But he didn't go along with it, so it became his greatest asset. And that's what Trump's got to do now. I know they're concerned about election fraud. They're aware of it. They don't want to hype it too much as to discourage voters. But no, no. What you can't steal is a landslide. That's been proven. They're going to get caught. And Hillary's already engaged in election fraud with the illegals all over the country being given driver's license. And Democrats wanting to pass laws in a, what, a whole bunch of states. It's like 14 states last time I checked. Illinois, California, you name it. Vermont, of all places. To let illegals vote. Wow, you're not a citizen, but you get to vote. I mean, that is upside down world. That She's engaged in all these frauds. She's crooked, Hillary. We know she's crooked. We know she's corrupt. She's already stolen the election. She's an illegitimate nominee. Trump's got to come out and say, erasing emails, stealing it from Bernie Sanders, and then put on the evidence, doing all this, having illegals vote. Americans need to vote for me in a landslide to support free and open elections because she's not an illegitimate nominee. People will call that bad sportsmanship. It's not bad sportsmanship if someone's a fraud. It's the truth. And Orthodox Republicans are the ones been selling us out to the Democrats. And Donald Trump isn't one of those people. And his whole name and psyche and spirit is bound to this. And he knows what he's got to do. So my message to Donald Trump's on InfoWars.com. Emergency message. Here it is, folks. Get it. Put it out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. Copy it to your channel. Send it to other talk show hosts. Ask them to get involved and investigate. They've got Glenn Beck and Ted Cruz, the Bush operatives, telling Texans to don't vote for Trump. And in Texas, they got enough brainwashed people because Ted Cruz wore a cowboy hat to maybe give it to Hillary. Don't let Texas be the Benedict Arnold that helps slit the country's throat. That, that's just the saddest thing I ever heard of. And if that's the case, I can tell you, Texas has been conquered. Is there no end to the treachery? Is there no end to the evil? Here's Donald Trump. Alex Jones here with an extremely important message to Donald Trump, the people of the United States, the people of the world. Crooked Hillary Clinton has openly stolen the nomination of Bernie Sanders. Mr. Trump, I'm not going to lay things out here that you don't already know, but I am going to ask you, to seriously think about making the issue of Hillary's election fraud in the primaries one of the central issues to defeating her in November. I have interviewed all the top election fraud experts, whether it's from low-level retail voter fraud or election fraud with the black box voting machines. And the evidence is clear. Only landslides can defeat major election fraud. And as your polls go up and up and up, seven, ten points against Hillary, as people learn how corrupt she is and how corrupt she has been, your numbers are only going to go up. They know you are the real leader. They know you should be the next president of the United States. And they're going to try to block you. When the mainstream media ridiculed Donald Trump and said he was a sore loser, that he shouldn't talk about Ted Cruz canceling elections and having voterless victories in the primaries. Yes, it was sensational when he came out and said, I'm winning these states, but they're giving the delegates to Ted Cruz. In some cases, they would just cancel elections in many states and just give him all the delegates. So we have a rigged system. So in Colorado, they were going to vote. And you saw what's happening in Colorado. It's one of the big things. It's a fix. Because we thought we were having an election 
And a number of months ago, they decided to do it by, you know what, right? Right? They, saw, they said, we'll do it by delegate. They said they're going to do it by delegate. Oh, isn't that nice? And the delegates were all there, all waiting. And the head guy, in fact, one of them tweeted out today or said today by mistake, and then they withdrew it, something to the effect, see, never Trump. Look what we did, never Trump. Because if I go to the voters of Colorado, we win Colorado. Donald Trump wasn't intimidated. He came out and said, what do you mean? When I win a state, I should win the delegates. And they had to back down. Sanders didn't do that. And Hillary stole it from him. But Bernie Sanders, I will say this, for the last five weeks, you turn on your television, Sanders wins, Sanders wins, again, Sanders wins, like seven or eight or nine, he keeps winning. And then you listen to the people and the pundits, and they say, he has no chance of winning. I said, what's going on? Because you have super delegates, by the way, I think the Republicans have a worse system than the Democrats, but they have super delegates. It makes it impossible for a guy that wins to win. It is imperative that the Trump campaign make this one of the central issues because it only further documents the organized crime nature of Hillary Rodham Clinton and her crime family. If she stole the primary, she's going to try to steal the general election. So Donald Trump's already done the right thing in the primary. He didn't let the voters have their votes stolen. He didn't let himself and his family be robbed as well. He stood up and said no. And so now, Donald Trump needs to really think about what he's going to do. But we have to think about what are we going to do to stop Hillary, who's already stolen the process, who's a fraudulent nominee from stealing the general election. My message to the American people is this. All right, there's a couple more yeah. minutes to it. The video's up on Infowars.com. My emergency message is Donald Trump. Everybody needs to spread that video. We'll be back with the second hour. Roger Stone, your calls, and a bunch of other geopolitical news as well. All right. Roger Stone's going to be joining us coming up in the next segment. I'm opening the phones up for your questions to Roger Stone about campaign 2016. Globally, there's re revolt going on against globalism, against offshore megabanks controlling countries. Unelected groups controlling people, doing bail-ins, taking money directly from nations and, and, and giving it to private corporations that are tax-exempt. But the Pope comes out, and the Associated Press reported on it in a speech in Krakow, Poland, and says we must transcend and refuse to see borders as barriers. So global government, that means just open yourself up, let yourself be run by the global authority that runs the global crises. But I wanted to play this clip. It's part of a speech, and then there's a response to it. How do you pronounce this? K H I Z R. Kurz Khan? Kazir? Kazir Khan. The qualities of a leader. And he goes on to describe uh, Trump as having no soul. In fact, we have a couple of these different clips. And then there he is with his wife, who's wearing a hijab. A partial one. I mean, in a lot of Muslim countries, they'll murder a woman if she's out without that or blow up their house or put her in prison. So that just gets into Islam. Like, here she is, okay, covering her head up partially. But the point is, is that women were seen as property, were basically hooded, and Saudi Arabia pitched the whole thing. So I'm just sick of Islamics lecturing me about how they're virtuous and all the social justice warriors telling me how they're the most advanced group in the world when you've got what is orthodox Sunni Islam taking over the world that literally keeps women as slaves. So let's go ahead and play part of the clip of him talking. Here it is. As patriotic American Muslims with undivided loyalty to our country. Well, of course there are people that are undivided. By They're seen as heretics by, Islam by Islamists. We came to this country empty-handed. And of course his son died. We believed in American democracy. In Iraq, fighting the non-radical Muslims. And with hard work and goodness of this country, Saudi Arabia be proud. we could share in and contribute to its blessings. We are blessed to raise our three sons. 
I'll tell you what's sick nation, is that it takes a Muslim to thank God they were at the godless the Democrat Party event. In fact, I'll give that the, if, 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 That's enough of him. I'll actually say this guy's better than Democrats. At least he thanks God. In fact, I'll give it to the Muslims. I'm not some Muslim hater. Everybody knows I was against the Iraq War. I was against the clash of civilizations. Because I knew Saudi Arabia was involved in it to take over, and they're the absolute out-of-control group. Now, Democrats support this whole takeover in Syria and in murdering Christians. What about us? We have value, too, not just you. That's what I don't like. Let's play Khan, though, when he talks about Donald Trump has a black soul. It's a short clip. Two things are absolutely necessary in any leader or any person that aspires, wishes to be a leader. That is moral compass. And second is empathy. Hillary Clinton went into a non-radical Muslim country, overthrew it, put Al-Qaeda in, hundreds of thousands died, Libya. She says, I came, I saw he died. <laughs> I know that hyena laugh. I mean, is he talking about Hillary with no compass? I mean, you know, ask this guy. Under Islam, how many girlfriends can Hillary have? I'm just saying. I'll be back with Roger Stone, Infowars.com. So the new fake controversy is how horrible and evil Donald Trump is for saying, why is this Muslim guy on, on the DNC criticizing me last week and his wife's up there not talking? It's weird. I mean, when Donald Trump brings a woman up on stage or anybody else, he has them talk. I mean, it is weird. And they say, oh, well, she just can't involve the trauma of her son that died in Iraq or whatever. The point is, is that in, 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 in orthodox Islamic countries, the women can't even drive cars and wear bags over their heads, is what Donald Trump is saying. Meanwhile, this guy is coming out saying Donald Trump has a black soul. Well, I wish this guy would say that about ISIS. So here's this Kazir Khan on the Clinton News Network. I want his family to counsel him, teach him some empathy. He will be a better person if he could become, but he is a black soul. And this is totally unfit for the leadership of this beautiful country. The love and affection that we have oh, yes. affirms that our beliefs, our experience in this country had been correct and positive. The world is receiving us like we have never seen. Oh. They have seen the blackness of his character, of his soul, that he is void of recognizing, empathizing with people. That's right. It's Donald Trump. The world is receiving the five million Islamists into Europe, 80% military age men, and the million. I mean, they, they claim a couple thousand. It's thousands in every major school in Austin, hundreds per, per, per high school, and then down to the grades, thousands of just children. We've gone with reporters. They admit it. They've covered that up. Just like in Europe, two years ago, they said it was 100,000. Now they go, it's 5 million. And they're bringing them in from Wahhabist countries. 0.3% are Christians because they're being exterminated all over the Middle East. 20% is what Syria was. 20%. 20%. 20%. And you think about this. They bring 0.3% in according to the congressional report. It's been the Associated Press. They won't let Christians in. They've sent people in to kill them. And he goes, everyone is receiving us like never before because they see through the Trump evil. Yeah, he cut off the priest's head and killed the nuns last week. He drove the truck over everybody in Nice. He, uh, he's attacks every day in Germany, bombing, shootings. And when an Islamist gets blown up, they say, a poor man got blown up, a Syrian refugee, when he blows himself up. It's about how he died. And when his name's Ali, his name becomes David in the BBC. And Donald Trump isn't even listed on Google as a presidential candidate. And now they're going to put the debates on during football games, NFL, everything they can to fix it. And to me, for Trump, he's been doing it, but I'd triple down. The whole issue is the Republican establishment, the Democratic establishment, the corrupt Pope, the Communist Chinese, the Saudi Arabian government, the Mexican president, all these foreign corrupt leaders. 
tell us we can't have Donald Trump and misrepresent who he is and what he stands for. And then Hillary steals the nomination from Bernie Sanders, who clearly won. That's admitted. Even in liberal publications like New York Daily News, you point out she stole the election. She's not even a legitimate nominee. You say, fine, though, you're the nominee, but it's a referendum of a landslide because I've interviewed all the experts. You can't stop a landslide. Now, Roger Stone, again, former Trump campaign head, worked in... Uh, Worked on nine campaigns, been inside three or four administrations. Uh, he joins us right now. He's an election fraud expert. And we're going to spend the rest of the hour on this and take your phone calls. Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. I should add, by the way, just briefly, that nobody else has got the courage to distribute and manufacture the Bill Clinton rape shirts. Well, I do. And it's not because I think I'm going to get out of this, by the way. It's what it's up to God. Between God and the, and the hit teams Hillary's got. They've been killing a lot of folks. But bottom line here, ladies and gentlemen, we're putting out the Bill Clinton rape shirt. Looks like the Bill Clinton hope shirt. And, and, and it's incredible. It's selling more now than the Hillary for prison shirt in the last week. I'm very excited. And it's on sale today, 20% off, $15.96. And the meager profit we make funds this operation. A little bit of money to stone to run what he's doing. Infowarsstore.com, the epic battle for the republic. We've got 40% off of many other items that ends today, InfoWarsStore.com. But congratulations, you've got the new mega viral shirt, uh, Roger Stone. Yeah, Time Magazine actually kind of, um, in an attempt to ridicule the shirt, only elevated public interest. And The Guardian. And The Guardian. Look, it is a key issue in this campaign. Hillary masquerades as a, uh, an advocate for women, but her husband is a sexual predator. And, you can, and he's attacked multiple credible women, raped assaulted, exposed himself while around. Settled cases. Settled at least one large case that we know of for almost a million dollars. Now, the Clintonites say, well, that's Bill. It has nothing to do with Hillary. It has everything to do with Hillary because she directs the campaign to discredit and intimidate and threaten, and as the left likes to say, bully, Bill's uh, victims into silence. Uh, and that is entirely documented in the Clinton's war on women. Uh, which uh, I uh, am also selling through Infowars, the Infowars store. This is the this is the uh, definitive expose on Bill and Hillary, but it's much much more than sexual assault and cover up, as you will see. So uh, it, to to move on, this T-shirt I think continues to put it front and center. The New York Post today uh, has a uh, published a set of of photographs of Melania Trump before uh, the Trumps were married, when she was single. I don't think they even knew each other at this period uh, of time. You know how she looks? Amazing. Bill Clinton's a sexual predator. They're trying to distract us with this. Yeah, so what? Donald Trump got a really hot wife. Great. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I bless is, uh, him. I admire him. You know, but... but Quite frankly, uh, I mean, Eastern European women, I got to say, are about as hot as it gets. Well, if they want to talk about sex, we have to talk about uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary's role as an accessory in his sex crime. i got to be honest. The that York, Mexican TV York stars. Times, Sorry, the go ahead. Times has already demonstrated they want to talk about Donald Trump and sex and his, uh, and his past. So, I mean, it is a fair game, I would say. But he's so evil. It said he would spoil women when he was divorced and had girlfriends and would actually ask women out at, at, at uh, cocktail parties. Uh, this is horrible, Roger. He would yeah. lavish women and treat them wonderful and it's just hard to give them fur coats. This is a horrible person. But let's go back to the big picture here. The only thing Hillary Clinton's got going for her uh, is uh, the mainstream media and at this point, I'm sure, a detailed plan on how to steal this election. They're petrified about the election of Donald Trump. They've announced that they're going to pursue essentially a Barry Goldwater strategy. They're going to say he's mentally unstable, he's uh, a dummy, he's a crook, he's in bed with Putin. Some amazing reverse McCarthyism, considering that Trump has never met Putin. Uh, but Putin knows Hillary well, and he knows she's a liar who will not keep her word. And he knows she's a neocon in a rush to war. So, yeah, he's taken the measure of both candidates. Uh, and he prefers Trump. Maybe it's Trump that he could do a Reagan-Gorbachev-type peace agreement with to prevent war uh, with somebody who keeps his word, Donald Trump.
<laughs> well, I tell you, it is just amazing. Uh, look, the New York Post, I know, is kind of Republican, but they've been pro-Trump to a certain extent. But I know that it's owned by Rupert Murdoch. There's been a coup there. Is this publishing photos of his naked wife, which I only admire him more now? Quite frankly, I mean, thank God made this. This is a God's creation. This is a work of art here. It's a little too skinny for me, but she's still super hot. I mean, what what is the issue here? Why are they doing this? Yeah, uh, because it, it's circulation. And let's face it, I mean, they're great photos, but they're not lewd photos. This isn't porn. It's art. I mean, if you go to Rome or Greece, there's like, there's like uh, sculptures of naked women. Well, let's just be clear. You can see her breasts. You cannot see her genitals. They are, they are hidden. And they're quite tasteful. Unfortunately. What's the, What's the point? She looks great. The, the New York Post, I don't think, is doing this as a part of a political agenda. Oh, uh, we got to have this as a first lady. Oh, my God. Compared to that troll we got right now? Oh, look, I, she's the most beautiful and glamorous first lady she would be since Jacqueline Kennedy. I well, mean, I, I mean, I, I got a chance to see her in person at the RNC, and in person, she has a presence. I was like, is that a goddess or something? Well, but Bill would, but Bill would be first lady. Stay right there. We got to go to break, Roger. All right. Finishing up with the whole Melania Trump situation. The point is, you want a powerful woman. The left says powerful women shouldn't use their sexuality. I see this as art. So putting bookends on it, uh, and I was looking at it during the break. I didn't know it was a scandal, but they are making it a scandal that his wife was a supermodel before he met him and that she posed in tasteful photos with her genitals covered. I mean, you've got to pull down the art in Europe if you do that. So for TV viewers, I'll put the New York Post article back up on screen. It's Melania Trump like you've never seen her before. And, and, and I don't think this hurts Trump. Uh, because he hasn't posed as some, you know, fake, super ultra right wing, you know, uh, Pharisee. He's a libertine. I mean, at least to a certain extent. But but I want to segue into election fraud uh, and where Roger Stone sees all this going. I, I talked to you, Roger, at length the last two days about this. I don't want to speak for you, but obviously. Uh, Trump was smart to come out and say, hey, Ted Cruz is robbing me. The media said, oh, how dare you? The delegates are allowed to ignore you. He said it was a fraud. The people said it was a fraud. We rallied. They had to back off. Uh, Sanders didn't. He had it stolen from him. So if she steal, already stole the nomination, I think he just points out we have a fraudulent nominee here, and this should be a referendum, and he should reach out really hardcore to the Sanders supporters, as you've been doing for really a year, seeing this coming. Uh, you've got the floor, Roger Stone. Yeah, Alex, I agree with uh, your analysis. I mean, if you're a true progressive, you can't possibly vote for Hillary Clinton. She's a, she's a, a crony capitalist and a neocon. She wants to rush off to the next war. Hopefully, her financial backers think with Russia. Uh, and um, she uh, has a terrible record on civil rights. She's done nothing for black people other than help incarcerate record numbers of them for nonviolent crimes. Uh, in Bill Clinton's 1994 crime bill, which has destroyed an entire generation of young African-American men. Uh, this was because Dick Morris and Hillary Clinton convinced Bill that he needed this rightward shift to get reelected. Uh, so this is part of his legacy. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what we're dealing with. So uh, I think she can be uh, defeated. Uh, I am convinced that they are looking more and more at the option of stealing it. Uh, this isn't going their way. Uh, the fact that the, uh, the Russians will, or whoever, it was going to continue to drop truth bombs on the American people in the form of their own documents. Alex, these are like the Watergate tapes. The Clintons have cut their own throat uh, because they assume that no one would ever see all of their secret illegal uh, maneuverings. This is why they use the unsecured server, to hide the very things that I suspect someone, most likely the Russians, is going to drop on the American people, like truth bombs, throughout this election. She could raise a billion dollars, and it may not matter. Trump may beat her like a drum as he uh, pounces on and helps further public knowledge of every one of the bombshells that is coming. This is get ready and strap in your seatbelt. I was about to say, he came out, as you know, and said, I'm taking the gloves off, uh, which means he's you know leaning more towards our camp. Uh, and very, very exciting. And we've got Reuters going back in polls that Trump was winning and changing them directly out of 1984 with the memory hole or the Soviet Union. I mean, we've got Google delisting him. They are pulling out the stops, Roger. Well, when, uh, when I met in uh, 
in Cleveland with Nigel Farage. He gave me a number of very salient observations and tips about how to reach blue collar voters, working class voters, union member voters. That's the founder and a uh, former leader of UKIP that had the British exit. Exactly. The man who orchestrated uh, that blow against globalism in the Brexit vote. Uh, and I think Donald Trump knows how to ring these chimes. In other words, I think he is going to make real inroads. These are the, precisely the kind of voters who are not offended by the photos of Melania and Trump. In fact, they probably like them, at least the men. Uh, secondarily, uh, these are the people who I think um, already dislike and distrust Hillary Clinton. And I think they're going to be key voters in this block. The pollsters uh, are going to are going to are going to show her ahead and try to create a sense of hopelessness about Trump. Sure, that's it. It's all about a fake perception. Right. So they're just going to put out fake polls. So how do we counter that? Well, uh, just say you don't believe them. Constantly say you don't believe them. Trump will denounce polls, as you know, when they are bogus and rigged. Well, well, I mean, what about this unprecedented move? Like I've got the article right here where even mainline pollsters are saying this is, quote, mal professional malpractice of Reuters to go back in time and change polls and then just give Hillary all of the undecided people. I mean, this is just this is total rigging nakedly. Well, and the other thing that we have uh, discussed is the fact that we have noticed a discrepancy between polls that use a live a questioner and polls that are automated where you use your keypad on the phone like a computer. Punch one for Trump, push two for Clinton, push three for undecided. Trump always runs three to five points better in the latter. There is a hidden vote for Donald Trump that's not gonna show up in any poll. If you are a middle class voter and you get a call from someone you don't know. Of course. Saying, who are you voting for? You're not going to tell them. Because you don't want people to know. Absolutely. Look, 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 I want to ask you the $64 trillion or zagillion dollar question, Roger Stone. Every liberal I talk to says they're voting third party or they're voting for Trump because Hillary stole it. We have real trouble. This isn't hyperbole. All over the country, even in Democrat areas, finding people that support Hillary. Now I go through super elite areas. Yeah, there's some Hillary signs, but that's it. Like Terrytown here in Austin. So... It looks like everybody's just been beaten over the head and is scared, but won't say they're voting for Trump. But I think there's a massive, I know there's a massive, closeted Trump voter percentage. What do you think? Uh, you know, five to seven points, depending on the state, much closer than others, but it's out there. It's a factor. Jill Stein biting into Hillary, particularly given new life by the revelations that they, they uh, screwed Bernie. I mean, uh, you know, Debbie Wasserman Schultz didn't even use the Vaseline. Uh, and then she's immediately rewarded. That's how brazen the Clintons are. Uh, you know, I think Sanders uh, put up a valiant race. There, I would have hit Hillary on some slightly different issues than he did. Sure. He so obviously we, we reach out. I mean, Trump continues to reach out and say, look, you got frauded. You got ripped off. Vote for me. Yes, there's, there, there is no question. Uh, so uh, I think that... The point here is an obvious one. If they'll steal it from Bernie, they'll try to steal it from Trump. And where will the stealing occur? It'll, it'll occur in the big city machines where they still have control. I'd watch Chicago because Trump could win Illinois. Trump is neck and neck with, in Illinois, even them with even without them turning out every vagrant. So it's just like Kennedy, Robin, Nixon again. It's going to go to Illinois. Yeah, it could. That's that. But that state shouldn't even be given recent history should not be even on our list as winnable. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Pennsylvania should be out of reach. Trump is doing so well among those blue collar working class people, the people who pay their taxes and don't attend riots uh, and aren't protesting uh, and, and who revere the flag and whose children serve in our military. Those voters who went for Bill Clinton, by the way, in big numbers, those voters like Trump and therefore in the Western part of the state, perhaps the most democratic part of the state. Trump is doing better than All right, I'm going to I'm going to totally put you on, when we come back I'm not even talking next segment. I'm going to put you in there the next segment I want you to lay it all out Roger Stone. Stay with us. We're also going to take a few phone calls in the final segment 877-789 Alex phones now open. Every day in the news, I see themes that emerge that aren't from the talking points of the social engineers, but are from the people. And I'm watching the calls just pour in for the next segment. And almost every one of them 
talks about martial law, a civil emergency, race war being launched to try to cancel or scuttle the election. What other false flags might Hillary pull? How do you steal an election? There's more than one way to skin a cat. Roger Stone's our guest. Get the new shirt that his team designed. We are printing and are the distributor of at InfoWarsStore.com. It's 20% off on all the apparel right now, 40% off on nutraceutical, storable foods. This mega sale ends tonight. It helps fund our operation, but these are amazing products everybody needs. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com takes you right to the supplements and nutraceuticals. Or call toll-free. We can answer all your questions and take your call seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Whether it's Brain Force, 40% off, or Colloidal Silver, Super Mel Vitality, we've got it all. Game-changing products, the best vitamin B12 out there, Secret 12, Joint Formula, Bone Formula, Anthroplex, Vitamin Mineral Fusion, Fruit Punch, great way to get your kids to take their multivitamin. DNA Force is the flagship product, Liver Cleanse, Living Defense, Parasite Cleanse, 888-253-3139 to call and order or ask any questions, 888-253-3139. The number to call in... Not that we really need more calls. We're going to those in the next segment. Uh, is eight seven 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 eight nine Alex? Okay, Stone. We got nine minutes left in the segment. You've got the floor. How do they steal an election? How do we block it? What do we do? And other things that are key. Well, Alex, I got to tell you that um, you know I've been working some long hours, uh, and I did uh, go out for a little celebration when Trump pulled ahead in the national polls. But uh, I did some of your liver cleanse the next morning, and it uh, got me back on track. <clears throat> Right now, to be honest with you, without Soul Brother number one, James Brown, opening the segment and popping two brain force, I wouldn't be able to do this at all. <laughs> I know. I, I got to say, you send me text messages at 2 a.m. We talk at 3 a.m. At 7 a.m., I'm getting messages. Uh, you are literally pouring out your essence in this. You were telling me privately, I don't know if I can say this, but you said you've never put this much energy into a campaign. This is history. Yeah, no, it's it's exciting, and I, you know, uh, I'm uh, waking up in the middle of the night and making notes of things that I, I just thought of. So, uh, and I think Trump is doing great. You're absolutely right. You see, the whole criticism of this Muslim uh, father that they put up the convention is uh, he's he has pointed out a truth that that Islam is a culture that does not respect, indeed, abuses women. So uh, they've all said, "Oh, how can he say that?" But it's true. Unfortunately, the mother probably wasn't allowed to speak because uh, it's not allowed in, in their culture. Um, I feel very badly about these people's son. I, I honor anybody who served his country, but they should realize that their son died because of radical, hateful, uh, murderous Islamic. Yeah, and look, you're, you're the so-called liberals claiming they're empowering women. I said I would interrupt, but you're bringing her up there wearing a freaking headdress. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And now what you see is kind of an interesting juxtaposition. You see, it used to be that Republicans were the anti-communist uh, uh, hard foreign policy hardliners. What was the charge against Hillary, uh, against Barry Goldwater? That he would get us into a war with the Russians. Trump is now being attacked for being close to the Russians, which is ironic in view of Hillary and Bill selling their souls in U.S. foreign policy decisions like control of uranium to the very oligarchs who are friendly with Putin. Who's close to Putin? They're close to Putin. Donald Trump's never met Putin. That's what's crazy. But, but like Nixon, maybe Trump is the peacemaker that Putin wants to deal with. Maybe these guys can reach peace. Uh, Trump, it's obvious to me, Putin knows her well. He's read her emails. He knows she's a lying crook and he can't trust her in any deal that he tries to make. Let's recognize the pressures he's got. He's got a right wing too, they want war. He'd like to have prosperity for his country. Now, he plays a tough hand in, in foreign policy, and I don't love this. Well, that's what Putin keeps saying. He says that Obama and Hillary break every deal they make. Well, he's out there fighting ISIS. We ought to be fighting ISIS more effectively at this point, having ISIS having been created by George W. Bush's policies and armed by Hillary Clinton. Now we have to deal with them. So uh, it is this whole argument that Trump is, uh, you know, is... Uh, too close to Putin, this is reverse McCarthyism. I see what Putin sees. He's taking the measure of both candidates. Well, sure, Hillary wants to make money on both sides of a war. Trump yes. wants prosperity. The Russians would rather de-escalate this military buildup. Look, I think the easiest way to go to the most important thing I know you want to talk about, uh, and I agree with you, I had a terrific uh, interview the other day um, with, uh, with uh, Milo, uh, on and Breitbart uh, on election fraud. It's excellent. 
Yeah, no, I, I think you, the first person to pinpoint this, the Clintons are capable of stealing this. And therefore, I think Trump needs to definitively say, if there's any evidence whatsoever of voter fraud, if an analysis shows the swing behind, between my private polls and the final outcome points out fraud, be clear. I will challenge your, your being sworn in. I will have my people march on Washington. We will block your inauguration. You're, you're uh, in court. We will seek to, uh, certainly. I think he needs to be very clear. We're not rolling over. Unlike Nixon, who sadly chose not to, uh, to, uh, to challenge the outcome of the 1960 elections, largely because unlike today, there was no paper trail. There was no way to do a recount in Texas. Lyndon Johnson had all the ballots burned within hours of the election. You couldn't recount Dallas County. The 95 Nixon Lodge votes they threw out that would have given Texas to the Republicans those ballots were burned. So what do you make of this delusion where they're saying they're going to try to get Cruz people to vote for nobody or somebody else or a third party to throw it to Hillary in Texas? All seven Cruz people? I hope Rick Perry challenges uh, Cruz. I would go out and raise money for Rick Perry if he would challenge Cruz. Rick Perry would be a... No, no, I agree. Rick Perry is way better. At least he's a real Texan. He's a real conservative, too, when it comes to economics. I don't agree with Rick Perry. No, he did good. He, he did do some. I agree. Compared to, I, I hear you. I would support Rick Perry over Cruz. Not even close. Uh, you know, and and hopefully Donald Trump will encourage him in that endeavor. So I don't know what Cruz people you're talking about. Red blooded American Texans. Well, I'm talking about the Star Telegram and others are pushing this. This this after uh, non endorsement, will Texans stand by U.S. Senator Ted Cruz? No, uh, he's first of all there aren't that many of them. He's hurt his standing in Texas very badly. By being a duplicity. Oh, I agree. I agree. It just shows how desperate they are. And Texans don't like liars. This guy gave his word. He signed a public pledge. So there's no there's no dispute. Uh, it's all about Ted. Uh, he's he can kiss his U.S. Senate seat goodbye if you ask me. I think there's a landslide for Trump. I know you don't be too optimistic, man. Every liberal I talk to all over the country, they go, "Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go third party or Trump." They're just scared to say it. I mean, I, I, just, I must tell you, Alex. I think you have to not underestimate the Clinton's organizational ability to turn out every vagrant, every homeless person, every illegal, and they're even in court in California and other places, they're in New York, they now want to vote illegals. No, no. They don't pay taxes. So that's, that's what Trump says. The Democrats are trying to legalize illegals to vote. I mean, it's, it's fraud right there. Yes, so uh, Trump won't stand for any of that. You, you could have a constitutional crisis. Uh, well, that's I mean, that's what's beautiful is that he's got the wavos. He challenged Cruz and the Republicans trying to steal it. They rolled over. I mean, do they understand that Trump is going to stand against them? I I don't think they've yet figured out that they're not going to be able to bury Goldwater Rising. Their whole attitude is that, particularly as things get worse for them, that they don't want to refute Trump on any of the issues, trade, immigration, jobs. They're just going to try to destroy him. In other words, they'll never... They'll never respond. Sure. What about the debates? I mean, they know he'll kill her, so now they're trying to hide him politically. They're trying to hide it now under NFL games. Yeah, I don't think that is going to work very well. Uh, again, uh, the Stephanopoulos is the Chuck Todd's want to nitpick Trump on whether he got a letter from the NFL. Pointless. They did this exact same thing to Bernie. Have we forgotten that they scheduled the early Democratic debates during games so that nobody would watch them. If Bernie supporters don't vote for Trump, they are... Uh, how could they all not, just for the integrity of our elections? Well, I, first of all, I don't think they will. Some will. Obviously, Bernie's hard left votes were the, the true... Then that puts him way over the top. I mean, they were the majority of the voters for Hillary. But, but Trump only needs about a third of Bernie's voters to win. I'm telling you, it all hinges on Bernie, like you were saying a year ago. You, Roger Stone, StoneZone.com, the T-shirt, Clinton, with the word rape under it. Get it out there. Um, this, this is such a time to be alive. InfoWarsStore.com, 20% off on all apparel, 40% off on nutraceuticals. It ends tonight at midnight. I thank God every day I run my own broadcast. I, I can't even keep track of all the information, much less craft it, spin it, get orders, get talking points. That's why they got teleprompters, because they're slaves. I'm not, and you're not, and I love you. I'm very humbled by our audience. I'm very humbled by our listeners. I'm very humbled by all your prayers. And I am very blessed to be here. And I'm very thankful for this position. Don't thank me. This is a real blessing. History's happening right now. You can feel the energy level rising. And whether Trump wins or loses, 
This is the Animating Contest of Liberty. Roger Stone of StoneZone.com's our guest. I want to race through your calls now. Rich in Texas, then Frank in New York. Rich in Texas, thank you for calling. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Hey, Roger. It was a pleasure to talk to both of you. Um, I just wanted to make a quick comment. I flew to Cleveland to see you guys at your Freedom Speech Rally. Thank you. What an amazing event. Um, it was just so awesome to see those kinds of people gathering together, uh, the open carry that they had, the Hillary for Prison shirts, and it was it was just an amazing atmosphere. Yeah, it's crazy to see a town with tens of thousands on the streets wearing Hillary for Prison shirts. It totally scared the establishment. Great point. And I see in the comments here, because we don't screen your calls, folks can add a comment. It says, your whole church has switched from supporting Cruz to Trump. Can you tell us about that? I sure can. Um, let me tell you, believe it or not, I go to Cornerstone Church, uh, here, uh, Pastor Hagee's church here in Texas, and they were totally uh, supportive of Cruz. I'd say 30% at the front was for Donald Trump, but they are completely on board with Donald Trump now. That's it's great. Has Hagee switched? Uh, I can tell you his son has. Matthew has. Well, switched. good, He's good, good, good for them. I mean, the guy's a great preacher. I disagree with some of the stuff he says. I mean, the guy's a great orator, but I just hate the fact that he gets so neocon. Amazing call. Roger, is that, that's what I'm hearing from everybody, Roger. Yeah, I don't, this is, uh, again, the, the media trying to make trouble. Ted Cruz, like all the Republican candidates who ran against Donald, including Jeb, are invited to speak at the convention on the condition that they will support the ticket. They're not even required to use the word endorse. They can call for Republican victory from the top to the bottom. They can say they're voting Trump Pence. Walker, Christie, Rubio, all proved to be honorable men. They're allowed to speak, Rubio by video, and they all endorse the ticket. Ted agrees to endorse the ticket, and then he knifes Donald Trump in the back like a Brutus. Now, Ted Cruz, Trump, Ted Cruz is dishonorable. Trump was magnanimous to even invite him. Uh, so he's double dealt. Now Ted Cruz is the Nelson Rockefeller Republican Party. He's the guy who walked away when we were... Ted Cruz is dishonor in the dictionary. He thinks he's going to come back and scoop up the marbles? Not a chance. The Trump people aren't going away. After eight years of a Trump presidency, Ted will be too old to be president anyway. So, uh, and he would be negated by the conservatives. Just as they remember Rockefeller doing this to Goldwater, which lost him the 68 nomination, which... Forced him from the No, I agree. Why did he destroy himself? So I want to go to more calls. The with the conservatives I speak to. Why did he destroy himself and become the definition of, of, of dishonor? We lose our feet here? Yeah, I think I've lost audio. That's why he couldn't hear me. Roger, can you hear me? All right, let's... We'll go to another call here. Frank in New York. Frank, you're on the air. Go ahead. Michael. God bless Alex and Roger Stone. You guys are true patriots. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. Um, this is, is Mr. Stone there? Is, he, is there audio there? Uh, I believe. Uh, do we have Stone's audio back, guys? Uh, we're trying to fix it, but go ahead and make your point. We're, we're running out of time here. Go ahead. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, I have a question real quick. Um, let's say if, if uh, Mr. Trump is, has, by, say, by 10, 50 points by October, do you think that the way enact presidential for Director 51 in suspending elections, do you think that's a possibility? I think they could activate the whole communist movement, the Black Lives Matter. They've been, I mean, who, who would ever think the president, when the cops get shot, would say, the police need to reform, it's their fault. Clearly, they're looking at this and beta testing some type of civil uprising uh, as a smokescreen. We're trying to get the audio to Stone. Stone, did you hear that? All right, well, we, we had a lot. Oh, he did hear? Well, let's put him back on air then. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Roger. Did, did you hear his concern about martial law or civil emergency? Uh I missed that. So go ahead. The, the, a lot of people are concerned about martial law. Move to martial law. Civil emergency is another way. I think it is. I think it is unlikely. Uh, let me tell you why. I think they understand as much as they are morally capable of that. That it would. That it would not pass muster neither internationally nor locally. That you would literally have a, a, an armed insurrection against the government. So what is far more likely. Now that Scalia has been taken care of, uh, is to steal this election, understanding that Trump has the gumption to fight right to the bitter end over the legitimacy of it. Uh, his lawsuits end up going to the Supreme Court, and they try to steal it there. You'll still have, uh, you know, the illegitimacy, and Trump will not stop fighting that. But 
That's a more likely scenario. Fix it in the Supreme Court. Uh, it's outrageous because the steal will be audacious. But I think that's more likely than martial law that just allows Barack Obama to remain president without an election. You could never sell that internet. Sure, I agree. But they could have a civil emergency riots to make it all racial right before the election as a distraction. But that would actually only help Trump because he'd point out what they were doing. Well, exactly. They leave their fingerprints every place. So they can put up a phony series of riots. They'll get caught. I mean, they advertise on Craigslist for demonstrators. Uh, the You're right. You're right. Frank, great question. Thank you. Another question on martial law. Real fast. Chris in Georgia. You're on the air with Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. Yes, hello, Alice. How are you? Great, brother. Go ahead. Yes, what I was basically going to say about martial law is Obama knows damn well if he declares martial law that it's going to backfire 100%. He knows there are more people and patriots in farm than the entire military. And, it, and if he declares martial law, he, he may have to move overseas because we're going to take over the White House. That's basically what could happen. Uh, listen, I agree, and I don't say this with pleasure because I'm scared of stuff like this, but the military and police are totally awake, and that's the good news here. If the globalists try some hanky-panky, they're in trouble. Thank you so much, Chris. Roger Stone? Yeah, I, I kind of agree that you could have a, a scenario in which uh, the average police officer is conflicted about where his loyalties are. I wouldn't assume... Because, see, they can only use the police state to try to close down a widespread protest, civil disobedience, uh, and, God forbid, violence. But um, if they steal the election and people are protesting against cop killers, are the cops going to... No, they're going to stand down. Exactly. Well, I think they may, some of them will stand with the, with the revolutionaries like us. Uh, I, I, these are patriotic Americans. The people who are the police officers in this country, by and large, they believe in playing by the rules. They and the globalists have taken... Our restraint is weakness. They don't understand. They take, we're restrained because we're peaceful people, but you can't push too far. Well, their biggest problem, of course, is that they don't like guns. They don't like to own them. It's okay for the police to have them. Let's face it. Those on the right exercise their Second Amendment rights, and therefore they see that as armed people out there who will fight uh, an illegitimate effort to steal the country. That's why they're always trying to disarm us. By various chicanes. That's right. They know about our checkmate. Chris in Indiana. You're on the air with Roger Stone and Alex Jones. Chris, you've got a point about closeted Trump supporters. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Hey, Roger. Yeah, first of all, I'm looking forward. I got a free book from you for uh, ordering from the um, the big sale you had from Roger Stone, the Clinton's Warm Women, and I'm looking forward to reading the details on the, uh, why Webster Hubble's the real father of Chelsea. Boy, uh, she's a, she, that's her dad. She looks just like him. No, there's no question about it. So I tweeted the other night, Webster Hubble's daughter, Chelsea Clinton, knocks it out of the park at Democratic uh, Convention. <laughs> uh, Ivanka Trump, she is not. So uh, it is, uh, you know, it's, look, it's a minor point. But all it shows you is how dysfunctional the and, and completely wanton the Clintons are. It's all fake. Look. It's all a fraud. So it's right, the whole, the whole marriage. Hillary is the right beard for Clinton. But, Chris, what's your point about closeted Trump supporters? Well, hey, I was at a South Bend Cubs game the other day. Uh, it's a minor league for a Cubs affiliate here in South Bend, Indiana, and I was walking around with a Trump shirt. I went to another one with a Hillary for prison shirt. I was getting high fives and stuff from people. I actually sat down, and by the way, my parents, who are Trump supporters too, didn't even want to be seen with me with the Hillary for prison shirt. It's that shameful for them. Oh, my gosh. But anyway, I, was sit I went and sat down, and uh, about three rows up for me, there was a family and a uh, trendy liberal girl that's probably like 20 years old looks back and she's like oh i like your shirt and i like spread it out and she's like because she didn't see from prison i'm oh she's like she's like oh never mind i don't like your shirt but then her parents like wave back and put their hands over their over their mouth and they're like oh we agree with your shirt don't mind her i don't I hear you we're out of time sorry the other callers brian mark richard and others i'll be back tomorrow 11 a.m to 3 p.m central Roger Stone, thank you so much for all you're doing. I, it's just so great to know you. You're such a, a smart guy, funny guy. We love you. Keep up the good work, and thank you for all your analysis here on air. Alex, victory or death? Patrick Henry, victory or death? Absolutely. Or Colonel Travis, victory or death? All right. Great job, Chris.